This is the sermon for October 22nd, 2023. And I want to talk about the Ten Commandments. And I have two different recent translations, which take a step back and look at the wider view and the heart view rather than just the external law kind of view. And I want to talk about how um, they aren't rules for all people, all times, all places. They were specific to Israel. And, and so I think this is interesting. So here's the first version. One, oh, Exodus 20, 2 through 17. One, be mindful of God in all things. Seek God and not something else. Two, God is mystery. Beware of thinking that you understand. Three, resist the urge to use God. Four, trust God's grace, not your own deserving. Five, be mindful to honor those who have loved you. Six, commit to nonviolence. Seven, honor your friends, your covenants, and your marriage. Eight, shun greed and possessiveness. Let go of possessing things and enjoy. Nine, be truthful in all things. 10. Refuse to gain at another's expense. So this is way too much material to cover in one sermon, but I wanted to give it a go. So someone said, some wit said that if the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20 were for all times and all peoples everywhere, then God missed an opportunity. God could have outlawed war, tyranny, torture, men battering women, all rape, economic abuse, slavery, among other things. That's how we know that the Ten Commandments are for a specific time and place and community. And so it's helpful to know that about Jewish history. Many of the commands are still quite helpful, like children respecting their parents. It's been rewritten here to say, um, be mindful to honor those who have loved you. So that's not just parents, but grandparents and all the people who have contributed. I love this. So, yeah, um, not coveting. That's a hard word in in the American uh, ethos. That that's a hard word because coveting is part of all advertising. They want you to covet another person's um, goods. And so it's just kind of fun to look at the American way and the Ten Commandments. Um, so the primary commandment, though, having only the one God and no others, marked in Israel's history the transition from the more common everyday practice of having many gods and honoring them all. So that's still current today in many places. So, uh, yeah. Now, by contrast to this specific time in Jewish history, Christians don't have Ten Commandments. We have one, which is to love others as Christ has loved us. Love others as Christ has loved us. Now, who really would embrace that as a way of life? As Christians, we say we embrace it, but I don't know that I do. Laying down my life for others, I don't know. I think that's a hard thing. Uh, the Christian rule of love others as Christ has loved us is not intended for all people in all places, all times, but specifically for Christians. This is for followers of Jesus. Jesus has invited us to change the world by loving others one at a time with the same love that Christ had for us. Uh, Jesus believed that this is the kind of love that is contagious in the best possible way. And we can't ever force others to live in any specific way. All we can do is model love for others and then hope that others are attracted to such a radical love. So it's a whole different way of thinking about uh, God's rules for us. Now, the popularity of the Ten Commandments is probably because they are easier to follow than Jesus' commands. Look at some of Jesus' teachings. 
Love your enemies. Who's good at that? Uh, blessed are the merciful who give mercy. Have you given mercy to someone who didn't deserve it? And what was that like? <laughs> Jesus taught, do not judge others and do not play the comparison game, either for better or for worse in terms of comparing yourself to others. Uh, how about Jesus teaching, become as innocent as a child or sell all you have and give to the poor? How about deny yourself, head toward crucifixion, and follow me? Who follows that? Yeah. Uh, or following along in Jesus' practices. Um, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, practicing extravagant forgiveness, associating with the lowly, or trusting in God's abundant grace rather than our own effort. We're not even very good at that, trusting in God's abundant grace uh, rather than our own effort. I know I'm not very good at that. Jesus' teachings and practices go against the American way. The American way includes idolatry, false witness, taking the Lord's name in vain, breaking Sabbath, coveting. Those who want to post these for everybody, who are we kidding? Those are all part of the American way. <laughs> Both the Ten Commandments and Jesus' instructions are for a particular faith community, Jewish people and Christians, not for everybody. It's our responsibility to change for ourselves and to model that integrity for others rather than expecting others to pick up the commandments and follow them. Everyone who wants to post the Ten Commandments on a courthouse wall want other people to follow those, whether they do or not. They want other people to pick them up and follow them. And how often do you hear, well, they should live that way because it's the right way to live. Well, how are you modeling that for others? The Ten Commandments or God's laws, <clears throat> they aren't rules or obligations. They're descriptions of the way things are. This is like the rule of gravity. <laughs> if you drop something, it's going to fall. And in some ways, the, the Ten Commandments are a way of saying, if you do these things in community, these negative things, it's going to break apart the community. It's going to cause havoc among the people that are trying to hold together as a people. And so, yeah, following the rules won't create loving community. They might help the community not fly apart into pieces, but they don't create loving relationship. So we don't follow God's commandments because we have to. We do it because we want to stay close to God. We do it out of love. That's the idea anyway. So rules, directions, and commands, they all give us a starting place. You know, like people say, don't murder, don't lie, don't steal. Those are really good practices. They're all cast in the negative. Don't do these things because they hurt others. Or why? Because why? Uh, and yet people do them. People do them. So they give us a starting place, especially when we act out of fear rather than love. If we act out of love, there's only one command, which is what Jesus did. Love God, love others. Two parts of one commandment. The prophets pointed out that the best place for the commands is written in our hearts. So the prophets came after Exodus and they said the commands could be written in your heart. And what would they look like? They would involve loving God and loving others. And that's what the prophets preached about. Don't settle for anything less than the one, the one God, the one reality, the one community, the one kind of love, which is a giving love, and have no other gods. So these are the 10 truths of Moses in another translation, again, for the modern day. All is one, so this is the one. All is one, there's only one being, don't settle for anything less than the one have no other gods. Two, 
God the Beloved is greater than what you think. Let go of your individual ego perspective and be open to what is real. Again, this is like um, gravity is a good law. <laughs> it, be open to what is real. God is greater than what you think. Let go of your individual ego perspective. Uh, let go of the God that's made in your image and enter into love. Have no idol that takes God's place. So that's two. Three. You can love God, but not use God. God is beyond your control or definition. Don't use God's name. In other words, uh, a lot of people pray a prayer and they hope that God will honor it and then they'll honor God. And that's uh, common, common, especially foxhole prayers, right? Number four, life is a gift. Let go, stop playing God. Be nothing powerless and empty-handed. Let God be God. Take time to stop doing and be. In other words, honor the Sabbath. We're not very good at honoring the Sabbath. But if we think of life as a gift, and if we stop playing God, be nothing, be powerless, be empty-handed. Let God be God. Take time to stop doing and be. Human doings, human beings. So, number five, you belong. You receive great gifts from those who have come before you and who surround you and all the living beings who provide for you simply because you're here. Show gratitude. Honor your elders. Uh, how good are we at honoring our elders in the American culture? Number six, life is sacred. Life itself is the presence of the Holy One. Do what gives life. Refrain from all that diminishes life. Do not kill. The life is sacred. Number seven. The heart of life is faithful love. God is faithful. All of life is a covenant. Be faithful. Don't be unfaithful in marriage or anything else. Number eight. We are all in this together. Possession is an illusion. Resist the temptation to think of yourself as independent from others or using another or yourself as more deserving than they are. Seek to bless rather than to take anything from them. See to it that all have what they need. Don't steal. So don't steal is simple. But what if you think of all of us being in it together and that possessing and the rich and the poor the rich can have far more than they need the poor far less than they need what if we're all in it together and what if stealing is making sure that we have the maximum amount of goods and the poor have whatever they can scramble for number nine illusion is powerful but truthfulness is more powerful to free yourself from the power of illusion, be truthful in all things. Don't bear false witness. Well, when we lie, we're creating a false illusion. And how often do we do that? We may not out and out lie, but we give in to the illusion that things are the way we picture it rather than the way things are. Okay, 10. You are a source, not an end point. Let go of possessiveness, let go of things, be giving instead of grasping. Share, don't covet. So it's one thing to not covet your neighbor's goods. It's another thing to know that you're a source of giving, you're not an end point of receiving. Let go of possessiveness, let go of things. These all take a step back. So. And then I have another translation, very simple and straightforward. That one was a little wordy. This one is much straighter. I am love, your God who set you free. I never give you less than freedom. Two, I exceed your imagining. Three, I am too great to, to manipulate or control. Number four, I give you time and space to simply be yourself, honor Sabbath, the rhythm of work and rest. Number five, I surround you with unconditional love and faithfulness. Number six, I only give life, not take it. Number seven, I am faithful. Number eight, 
I give and do not hold back. Number nine, I reveal what is to you, what is real, in other words. Ten, I desire only your blessing, not for my sake, but for yours. So I'm going to return now to the original that are printed in the YouTube video and that you have um, one. Be mindful of God in all things. Seek God and not something else. Two, God is mystery. Beware of thinking that you understand. Three, resist the urge to use God. Four, trust God's grace, not your own deserving. Five, be mindful to honor those who have loved you. Six, commit to nonviolence. Seven, Honor your friends, your covenants, and your marriage. Number eight, shun greed and possessiveness. Let go of possessing things and enjoy. Nine, be truthful in all things. 10, refuse to gain at another's expense. All of scripture is an invitation into God's reality. May we explore that together. Amen.